Birthright is an NGO that brings some 40,000 young American Jews to Israel every year on free trips, it says, are designed to, quote, facilitate and implement Jewish Zionist experiential educational visits to Israel, especially youth. If Not Now is also an American Jewish NGO with the stated goal of shifting the American Jewish public opinion away from its stated goal of the, uh, from the status quo that upholds the occupation. That's referring to Israeli control of territory claimed by the Palestinians. And If Not Now is targeting Birthright in a campaign urging the group to, in its words, tell the truth about the Israeli occupation. Six activists joined by two other Birthright participants staged a protest walkout from a Birthright tour this week on that issue. This was a little bit of that scene. We have been really, we've had a hard time with some of the the misinformation and some of the like generalizations that we've been hearing and um, this is a real opportunity and rare for us to listen and learn and to take a stand against endless occupation and for freedom and equality. Um, we want to extend the invitation to all of you and anyone who's interested in taking this step with us. Well, joining us right here in the studio are two of those birthright walk-off participants, participants, Elon Glickman and Kareen Kersey. Thank you both very much for being here with us. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, Elon, let me start with you. Uh, birthright, as we described, its stated mission statement is to strengthen the Jewish identity of a diaspora Jew. So why choose this forum to uh, make that kind of statement? Well, uh, I grew up really deep in the Jewish community of Los Angeles, and I learned that one really strong Jewish value is uh, for one to question and also to see the truth and pursue social justice. Birthright in what it does by refusing to discuss, show the occupation, or even allow us to hear from Palestinians, um, what it's really doing is, is hiding the occupation from young American Jews like myself. And uh, 40,000, like you said, uh, young Jews go on this trip, and I think that myself and all of them deserve to know the truth and deserve to get a much more um, realistic view of Israel than Birthright is showing us. But let me ask you, and you can weigh in, Corinne, Birthright doesn't say its job is to, to show uh, Amer young American Jews a realistic portrait of Israel. It says its mission is to encourage Jewish identity among American Jews. That's what its goal is. So why should it be obligated to do? There are other groups that have, for example, tours in the West Bank. Well. Like I said, asking questions, seeking out the truth, to me, this is a very strong part of my Jewish identity. And for Birthright to come here and to not show us the occupation, I mean, it's very equivalent to someone taking a tour of the South in 1950s and not talking about segregation. And for me, when Birthright takes me on one of these tours, doesn't allow me to speak with Palestinians, doesn't allow me to hear their experience, it honestly makes me sometimes even ashamed um, to be Jewish, because I know that my community is very complicit in upholding the occupation. Birthright is a part of that by refusing to show us the uh, truth. Corinne, is it their responsibility, though, you're saying birthright doesn't allow you, but they have their own framework, and uh, in many ways, it's well, it is your choice to go on a birthright trip who has its own sort of stated goal. So why not uh, do that in another way? Why not uh, take part in a group that does uh, do that kind of stuff that you're talking about, that does go into the West Bank, that does meet uh, the so-called other side? Well, because this trip says it's apolitical, uh, I don't think it's realistic for them to take us here and, and totally ignore it. Uh, and even when they talk about it, it's not in a way that's really hearing from Palestinians. I mean, they specifically banned trip organizers from planning trips that involve meeting with Israeli Arabs. So that, to me, already says something, that there is an agenda here. And when you see the people that donate, like uh, Sheldon Abelson, uh, it's clear that there's some some stated goal and, and it's not just about promoting the Jewish identity when when Jewish identity is questioning the truth and you're not allowed to talk to an Israeli Arab how are you supposed to ask the kind of questions that you need to ask to get the truth and part of I was really moved on this experience uh, with regards to my Jewish identity because I was actually meant to have a bat mitzvah uh, that morning that we walked off um, and I had been thinking about what the other people on my trip had been saying about these questions and I was suddenly realizing that I couldn't just sit back because silence is complicity with what's happening and if I were to sit there and let them just give me this one narrative how would that be upholding my responsibility as a bat mitzvah to 
to sit back and not ask questions and not take responsibility for my education. Now, I'm sure you both know your actions have generated some debate in Israel and strong reactions. Let's look at one that appeared in the left-wing Haaretz newspaper, which does certainly support uh, Palestinian independence. It's by one of their writers, Alison Kaplan Summer. Uh, and she, she notes that these uh, programs are basically a gift from the government of Israel and wealthy American Jewish individuals. Uh, you can dislike or even hate the gift, but accepting that gift only to proceed to hurl it publicly in a dumpster is not an attractive sight. Uh, and declaring what a sacrifice one is making adds absurdity to what already looks like the act of an entitled brat. I'd like to get your response to that. Well, <laughs> I was told that this trip would teach me the truth about Israel. And, and when I accepted this gift, I was hoping that I would really get to, in touch with my Jewish identity and really learn to love this, this country. Um, my grandmother is, was an Israeli, or is an Israeli, and uh, she emigrated to the United States. But, um, you know, I always grew up knowing that Israel was basically my family's homeland and something that I really wanted to learn more about and to connect with. So how is it acceptable for even, you know, a generous gift to basically lie by excluding all of this information and really focusing on one side of the story while not giving us a bigger picture. Do you feel like this was effective? Like, for, for those kind of commentaries, what we just heard from Arich, that say this was just sort of a, a very uh, overdramatic, a social media stunt and not a real interest in really learning more or doing something sort of uh, more productive. Do you feel like you made an impact, that you had a, a productive, that it was a productive choice, what you did? Absolutely. And I mean, I think when, you, when people talk about our protest being ineffective, I mean, what's actually ineffective is birthrights education around Israel. It's extremely obvious to all young American Jews that this trip is a propaganda trip and that it's intentionally hiding the reality of the occupation from us. I mean, here, I'll show you the map they Can gave us. Can I just ask you, yeah. uh, occupation of what territory specifically? The occupation of the West Bank, East Jerusalem, and Gaza specifically. Uh, because if your group, if not now when, does not actually indicate which area is occupied, it doesn't mention the West Bank and Gaza on its website. Um, uh, I mean, I can tell you that I know, according to me, those are the occupied territories. And I think when you go there yourself, well, not to Gaza, which we can't do, but to the West Bank and East Jerusalem, you very obviously see that it is occupied. There's a military occupation there. Their lives are, Palestinian lives are controlled and restricted on a daily basis. All right. Well, Elon Glickman and uh, Corinne Kersey.